Um, so, so thank you so much for having me again. Um, I'm happy to be here today to talk to you guys about dolphin personalities. Um, and so just a little more introduction for me. So I work at Eckerd College here in St. Petersburg, Florida, um, and I've done a lot of research um, surrounding questions of animal behavior and communication, but I kind of started off looking at questions with marine mammals, in particular, looking at uh, personality in bottlenose dolphins. Um, this was part of something I explored when I was doing my master's thesis, and I'm currently exploring personalities in a different species of dolphin, um, rough tooth dolphins, which I'll share a little bit about when I get to the end. Um, so one of the first things I wanted to talk to you guys about is, so what is personality? Some of you may be really familiar with it. Some people might not really be sure or have heard of it before. Um, and so personality is something that we all have has been really well studied in humans and animals are catching up. Um, so personality, trying to really put it into a definition that hopefully everybody can understand is when we look at characteristics or traits of individuals. And so when I'm saying individuals, I mean each one of us is an individual human, individual person. You know, we have different, maybe you each have a dog um, or a cat or a pet. Um, or each individual animal. Um, and we look at characteristics or traits. And so we might have looked at things that kind of make up why we are the way we are, the ways that we act. Um, so maybe sometimes we feel a little lazy or other times we're really outgoing and talkative and maybe sometimes we're, we act shy. And these are all different kind of labels we give to some of our behaviors. Um, and so a lot of what we look at when we're doing personality research, whether it's with humans or non-human animals, is we look at patterns of behavior. Um, and so when we're talking about patterns, we mean maybe behaviors that happen pretty frequently together. So for example, I'm a pretty outgoing and I would say a little bold person when I'm talking to people. So when I'm in the classroom, I usually my voice is really loud. I use my hands a lot when I'm talking. Um, have a lot of energy and all of those kind of patterns of me using my hands, pitching my voice really loud are pretty consistent when I'm teaching and talking with my students here at Eckerd. So that would be a pattern of behavior for me that kind of helps to indicate that I'm a pretty outgoing or bold when I'm teaching. And so maybe that's something you can think about or what are some different kind of patterns of behavior that relate to your personality. So that's kind of something you can think about. Have you ever been told that you're really outgoing? Uh, and then when you think about that, what does that mean to say that you're an outgoing person? Um, usually we typically think of people who are outgoing as those that maybe will approach new people um, or are really willing to talk to someone they don't know. Or if you find a new toy or a new object, maybe you're likely to go up, approach it, check it out, investigate. Um, or you're more likely to explore something new. Um, or maybe you've been told you're a little shy or more timid. Um, and what kinds of things do we usually think about as being associated with being shy or timid? Um, these could be maybe we're a little bit more hesitant. We want to stay closer to our parents or to our friends. Maybe we don't like new things so much. Maybe they're a little bit a little scary. Uh, want to take our time, be cautious. Um, these are examples of some personality traits. And there's a lot of different personality traits that we can look at that we use to help identify who we are. They're kind of like little pieces of the pie that make up you. And so we're interested and we often look at, well, how are our personalities different from each other? So maybe you have a sibling or a good friend and they're really, really talkative and high energy and maybe you're really low energy. Maybe you're both very talkative. Uh, maybe there's similarities, but we often have a lot of differences too. Um, and the reason why we have these differences is because we all have different experiences. Um, so we have different um, family lives with who we live with at home, different places maybe you go to school, um, different friend groups that you interact with. Maybe you're the youngest in your family or you're the oldest or you're an only child. And these are just a couple of examples of all of the things that make up the different experiences you might have that influence your personality. And so we all have kind of individual ways that are unique to us and how we express our personality. And so this is something we've been really interested in with humans. We always really like to look at, well, what makes us us or why do we act the way we do? Um, and this has kind of led 
uh, to an interest in studying these questions in animals as well. And well, since we see personality characteristics in humans and humans are animals, um, what about other animals that aren't human? Do we see any kind of signs that they have either similar, person um, similar personality characteristics or maybe different ones unique to that species? So research so far has suggested that yes, we do see some evidence for personality in animals that are not humans. Um, so we have seen several studies that have looked um, at exploring this question of, well, is there personality in non-human animals? And we've seen some evidence to look that, that animals like dogs have some signs of personality, um, especially when we look at that idea of um, when I talked to you guys before about being really outgoing or bold versus being more shy or timid. Um, and that bold, shy kind of continuum has been probably really productive for us as researchers in exploring personality in non-human animals. And so some other species, there's been some studies with pigs, there's been some studies with primates like chimpanzees, um, there's been some studies um, with bottlenose dolphins, which I'll talk about, seals and sea lions, um, including a recent study with killer whales for marine mammals. Um, there's also been some studies with horses, hyenas, so a lot of range of different types of species. Um, and some have been explored a little bit more than others. Uh, most animals um, that we've explored with personality, we're still kind of scratching the surface, which means we're just getting started. We're opening that question and really trying to find ways to explore it in meaningful ways. Um, but today, I'm gonna talk to you a bit more about personality in dolphins in particular. Um, and kind of what do we know and where are we going in terms of how we study and research personality. And so bottlenose dolphins, um, we have been able to conduct a couple of studies that have that suggest that they do exhibit individual differences in personality traits. Um, so again, that means that we see that not only is there some evidence that dolphins do show personality traits, um, but also that they have differences, that not all dolphins act the same. Some dolphins maybe are more bold and outgoing, others are less. Some are more playful um, than others. Um, others are gonna be more active. Others like to take, kind of conserve their energy more. So we see lots of differences based on the individual, um, which is similar to us, that we all don't act and behave the same way as humans. We have differences in our behavior. Um, and we also have been able to demonstrate that these differences are consistent over time. Um, so what that means is it's not as if these patterns of behavior change every single day. Um, they, they stay pretty consistent with some changes, the same way that maybe aspects of your personality now might be a little bit different when you're older as you kind of gain more life experience. Um, and we also see that the context matters. Um, and so what I mean by context it might mean like, so if you ever had to stand up in front of your class and maybe give an answer to a question, it might be a little bit scary. Maybe you're not really feeling as comfortable talking in front of the whole group, but maybe when you're with your friends, you're really talkative and really excited to share what happened that day. Um, those are two different contexts when you're talking in front of a group and whether you're talking with your friends. And in one's context, maybe you're really outgoing and the other, maybe not so much. Or maybe you're really comfortable in both, as some people are. So it just highlights that we have these differences that we want to account for. And we've been able to show that's important not only for humans, but also for dolphins when we look at personality. So one of the questions we kind of look at as well is, well, how do researchers study dolphin personality? Because when we look at personality in animals, it's very different than how we have to look at personality in humans uh, because with humans, if I want to know, well, how outgoing do you think you are? Well, I can ask you and you can kind of give me an answer. You can think about, hmm, like, how do I behave each day? I'm pretty, I'm very outgoing or I'm only kind of outgoing. Uh, but with animals, we can't just ask an animal like, hey, tell me how lazy you are. Um, animals can't answer those questions for us. Um, so what we have to do is we have to rely on what we can see. We have to rely on their behavior. Um, and so behavior is going to be the actions that the animals do. And 
we use that to kind of focus and give us that objective way of looking at personality um, by focusing on behavior. So there's two kind of roots that researchers have taken so far in answering this question or trying to answer this question. Um, the first has been a methodology called ratings. Um, so this is pretty simple. So what we um, do is we ask humans, maybe that humans that are really familiar with the animal. So for example, um, for some studies with dolphins in particular, they look at those humans that take care of the dolphins. So those animal care specialists or trainers that maybe have worked with those animals for at least a couple of years. So they're very familiar with them um, and have a lot of experience working with them and observing their behaviors day in and day out. Uh, and then they'll ask them questions. They'll give them an item that says, can you please tell me how um, energetic you think this particular dolphin is? You know, put number one if they're not so energetic and put like a seven if they're super energetic and if they're in the middle, you could put like a three or a four and humans then will rate the animals. So kind of like this picture here where they might check off on a box, um, where do you think the animal will fall? And we can still ask this question across different environments and across different situations. So this is a similar way that we sometimes study personality in humans because we'll have observers rate another person. Um, or we'll even have um, ourselves um, fill out ratings and reflect on our own behavior. Um, and so this kind of is a more quick um, or way to collect data um, because you can administer ratings, have research, uh, um, the observers fill them out, look at how responses are related, and see if we can find where we agree um, on different potential traits that animals might exhibit. The other methodology, um, and this is the one that I particularly focus on with my research, is a coding method. Um, and so what do I mean by coding? Um, I mean that rather than asking humans about um, how they feel an animal's behavior might be, we look just at the animal's behavior as it occurs. So kind of like this little clip in the corner where we might watch the animals, we'll note what they come in contact with, are they vocalizing? Are they rubbing against each other? Are they interacting with an object? What are they doing? Um, and we try to look at, well, what behaviors tend to happen together pretty frequently? And then that lets us look at patterns. And then once we see those patterns, we'll assign a label to them at that point in time. Um, and so we've seen both methods used so far when studying um, in dolphin personality. And we've been able to kind of see that there are some traits that are easier to pull out with one method than the other. And then we see some traits that we see come out of both methods, which really helps us maybe say, have more support that, hey, these are some maybe important traits to these animals. Uh, but these is kind of currently the two uh, focal methods that we researchers will use. So to that effect then, what personality traits have been found in bottlenose dolphins? Um, and there's been probably the most for any kind of dolphin species that's been looked at as bottlenose dolphins. So I'm just going to pull out a couple of, of key kind of studies that have happened um, that we have seen some evidence. And some will be an example of ratings and some will be an example from coding. Um, so one of the earliest studies that looked at dolphin personality with ratings um, focused on something that we call the five factor model. Um, so this is a really popular way that we study personality in people, in humans. Um, and it has the acronym OCEAN that you can kind of see here. Um, so we look at characteristics or traits of openness to experience. Um, so that typically refers to personality traits like being um, very kind of exploratory, um, curious, um, willing to kind of look at something new. Um, conscientiousness, so traits like being dependable, responsible. Extroversion, that refers to kind of the ones we are more familiar with usually, being really outgoing, being bold, the opposite of that being more timid. Um, agreeableness, which will refer to kind of characteristics like being really friendly. Um, and then neuroticism, which can deal with traits um, on both sides, so on the more highly neurotic side of being more anxious or jealous, and then on a low neurotic side, being more relaxed um, and calm. And so 
there were researchers who looked at raiding dolphins. So they asked dolphin caretakers who are really familiar with the animals to see if they could identify if the animals um, exhibited characteristics or traits that made up these five factors. Um, and they found that they did, especially for extroversion, agreeableness, and neuroticism. Openness to experience, usually the curious kind of trait is one we find more support for. Um, conscientiousness is a little harder. Um, and I bet you if you think about it, you can understand why it might be hard to show what conscientiousness means through behavior. Because things like being responsible or someone you can depend on, um, those are sometimes hard to observe. But what does that mean for a dolphin? Um, so we get a little bit more disagreement there. But we did find some initial evidence that, yes, we do see that dolphins exhibit traits that mirror some of these five-factor model characteristics that we also see in humans. Um, and I'll add that other studies with other species of animals have also found um, some similar five-factor model types of traits. So it's not just in dolphins, but in a lot of different species, including some primates, horses, dogs, um, and even fish. In another study that looked at ratings, they, we focused a bit more on some specific traits. Um, and we wanted to see that question like I mentioned before of when I gave the example of being maybe comfortable with your friends talking, but not so comfortable standing in front of your class and having to talk in front of the whole class. Um, and that maybe you act differently in those contexts. So researchers were also interested in, well, do dolphins act differently in different contexts? And so the one study, they focused on the traits I have listed here in bold. So traits like playful, um, curious, timid, observant, aggressive, gentle, and cooperative. And they found that the human care specialists who were filling out the ratings were able to kind of consistently identify each individual animal's personality kind of patterns. Um, but they also found that these traits or characteristics were not always the same, um, meaning that maybe some dolphins were more curious when they were interacting with other dolphins, but maybe were less curious when interacting with objects. Um, or maybe they were more observant, maybe hanging back, watching when interacting with humans, but then less observant when interacting with objects. So we found support that similar to how humans maybe have different ways of expressing their personality in different contexts, the dolphins were showing signs of that too. And so this really stressed that, yes, we see some signs of personality in dolphins and that the context for how we show personality is also important to dolphins. So another way I mentioned we can look at personality is through coding. Um, because so far, a lot of the studies focus on ratings. Um, and coding is something that I focus on with my research. Um, and so, like I mentioned, we don't have lists of traits like playful, and we can't just ask other humans, how playful is this dolphin on a scale of one to seven? Um, instead, we start off with no traits. So when I am working with my data, I don't have any traits in mind. Um, I look just at what are they doing? And so this is kind of an example of a clip of dolphins. And you can see there's a lot of behavior going on. And we'll want to note who's interacting with who. Um, how are they touching each other? Are they rubbing with their pectoral fins? Are they open mouthing? Um, who are they swimming with? How long do they swim together? Do they swim while they're maintaining contact? Do they swim while they're separate from each other? And we kind of look at each individual, what the animal's doing, how long they're doing it, how often they're doing it kind of a super in-depth look at all the behaviors that we can, that each individual dolphin that we're able to observe is doing. And then we're able to kind of look at, well, what behaviors happen together? You know, the same way that we have our own patterns that we know indicate being bold um, or other types of traits, we were trying to define the dolphin's traits using the patterns of behavior that we see. And so just kind of a brief look at how we would do that is you would have a list of behaviors that you can see over here on the right. And we would have definitions for them. We call these operational definitions that allow us to have really clear cut ways of defining. And then we would look and record. We would note 
how long the behavior was occurring for, who was the animal engaging in the behavior, what was the behavior, were they interacting with another dolphin, were they interacting with an object like seagrass or seashells, um, were they interacting with the um, with other individuals or other humans present um, or other types of wildlife, a fish if it was nearby, um, in order to get an idea of, well, what are they doing and what are all those details that surround how the animal is behaving. And so for this particular study, which was some work that I did, um, we looked um, and found some personality characteristics that we defined using the behaviors. So one of the traits that emerged was playful. This usually, this trait consisted of when we saw patterns of behavior such as um, creating a bubble ring and interacting with the bubble ring. So sometimes dolphins will blow bubbles and sort of interact with them almost like they're um, in play. Um, or when they would be interacting with seagrass and throwing it either to each other or with someone in their environment. Um, a contact seeking trait was defined by a lot of behaviors where the dolphins maintain physical contact with each other. So maybe they were swimming together um, while maintaining physical contact, lots of different rubbing behaviors, um, but showing that they were approaching and initiating contact a lot. Um, curiosity, so being more likely to approach novel individuals or novel objects. Um, assertiveness, which might be a word you're maybe not as familiar with, but usually it means kind of like sticking up for yourself is a good way to think about it. Um, or kind of advertising like, hey, like I kind of mean business right now. Um, and so sometimes that would be through some kind of posturing, sometimes open mouth displays. Um, we had a friendly characteristic, um, which came through like pair swimming, um, some petting and other types of affiliative behaviors. Um, so the kind of key difference with these traits that you see here is that we define them based on the behaviors that we coded. So we didn't come in with a definition of playful that's been used for other animals or used for humans, but defined by the dolphin's behavior. Um, but you can kind of see is that you know, the term or trait of playful came up not only for how we labeled it from the behavior coding, but also for how the rating group, um, they used playful. Um, curiosity was something that we still found to be an appropriate label for the animal's behavior. Um, and so we're seeing that there's some support that these must be really relevant personality characteristics because not only do we find them through the coding method, but also through the rating. And so that's something that researchers are also looking to do is combine methods and look at them together and see where do they agree? Where is their overlap? Um, we also saw that the animals were expressing these characteristics very differently depending on if they were interacting with each other and other dolphins or interacting with objects um, or with potentially humans if they were in the environment. And so it further, again, found support for that idea that, well, the context is really important. So that's something that we do have in common, is that we have evidence to support that context matters for human personality, and it seems to matter for dolphin personality, too. And so this kind of then also brings up the question, well, why is this important? So this, for a long time, people didn't think, well, personality, why are we looking at this? It's not relevant. It's, it, how can we be objective? Um, and we've been able to show and see that we can find ways to start off objectively trying to tackle this question, combining these methods. Um, and one, um, some of the reasons why include, well, researchers think that maybe personality impacts the way the animals hunt or forage, especially when they use coordinated efforts. Um, so some dolphins will engage in like kind of fluke slapping where they slap their flukes on the water and kick up. A lot of mud and others will drive into the wall of fish and sometimes we wonder well who takes on what roles is it always the same animals that are kicking the water up with their flukes or the same ones driving or do they take turns um, and does personality have something to do with it probably the same way to think about it is if you ever done a group project at school and maybe there's somebody who has really organized and wants to make a plan and a timeline and somebody else who have to constantly be asking like, hey, are you ready? Can you help? And everybody kind of has a different way of interacting. Um, so do we see anything like that with dolphins? Um, we also think personality is important for social behaviors and social interactions. 
Um, so we look at, well, does personality maybe relate to which animals want to spend time together for things like when we see dolphins form alliances, males form alliances, um, females in nursery groups, um, mother-calf interactions, um, is there different kind of maternal styles? Um, and we do see some evidence um, to support that. There are different styles that might be re are related to things like personality and characteristics. Um, we also have some researchers that look at, well, what about the really, um, the travel um, of dolphins, especially groups that are more transient, which means they travel a lot um, in different places. So who's sort of leading the travel? How is the cohesiveness of the dolphin group um, kind of working? And is there something related to personality in terms of, well, who's leading um, or is it a group? And so these are just a couple of different questions that personality might be important to. Um, and it's probably important to other questions too when we look at questions of dolphins, do they cooperate? Um, personality probably plays a role of who's maybe more dominant, um, who's maybe more creative. Um, how do we assess creativity in dolphins? Um, I know that's a study that um, the Dolphin Communication Project works on and personality probably plays a role. And so this is definitely a question that is being getting more attention for a lot of different non-human animals, including other types of dolphins. Um, and so for me, um, my current one of my current research projects looks at rough tooth dolphins. Um, so you can kind of see from these pictures, these guys look a little different from bottlenose dolphins. Um, they are darker in coloration. Um, they have kind of a longer, not really longer, but less of a, a divot or indent between where their melon meets the rostrum. Um, and it's not one that we always come across. We don't see these guys as often as we see bottlenose dolphins. They tend to like to be in deeper water. Um, but my students and I, we work with our local aquarium, the Clearwater Marine Aquarium, to study the rough tooth dolphins that they have um, because the, the two they have were rescued and they couldn't be released due to hearing loss. So they have a lot of issues with how they hear through their echolocation. So the Clearwater Aquarium is their forever home. Um, but it allows us a chance to really get to maybe look at what's their behavior telling us. Do they have similar patterns of behavior um, that we've seen in bottlenose dolphins? Or are they really different in terms of how their patterns of behavior could inform us on things about personality? So that's something we're currently looking on, primarily using the behavior coding method that I talked about. So we take lots of videos of these guys. And we're looking at how they interact and behave. Um, and even though there's only two animals, so we can't make any big conclusions, but we're hoping to just start to look at um, some of the different behaviors that they see and what that can maybe tell us about individual differences. And maybe other questions about rough tooth dolphins, since we don't really know too much about this type of species. So that's kind of a brief introduction to like kind of personality in animals and some current status for in terms of personality in dolphins. Um, but as I mentioned, this is also a question getting more looked at with other species too. So we'll definitely be seeing more research hopefully coming out that allows us to better define what it means to have personality in dolphins and how it's related to their behavior um, and conservation goals. So definitely if I have any questions I can answer, I am happy to do so. And thank you guys for having me and for your time. Fantastic. Thank you so much, Dr. Aaron. Um, and before we get to questions, I'm just going to uh, wrap up for folks who may be joining or listening to DCP webinar for the first time. Um, if you missed part of this webinar or you're listening to the recording and you just want to find our past recordings, you can find those directly on our website, dolphincommunicationproject.org, and just look under the education tab and you'll find the recorded webinars. Um, they're also on our YouTube channel um, and our newer channel is uh, more cleverly titled uh, Dolphin Communication Project. So we're a little bit easier to find now. 
And then this was a dolphin lesson. So geared towards the younger audience, a little bit shorter. And then we also have deep dives. Um, those are a little bit more in depth. They run closer to an hour. Um, and though we are done with those uh, for this semester, we will be starting up again in the fall. And you can find all of those uh, recordings as well. And if you've listened to all of our webinars and you still need more dolphin science, uh, be sure to check out our podcast, The Dolphin Pod. It's free um, wherever you get Get your podcasts or directly from the DCP website. And of course, we are happy to provide uh, these programs for free, but we are a US nonprofit. So I would be a bad nonprofit person if I didn't remind you all how you can support our work. Uh, so you can adopt a wild dolphin, you can become a member or make a donation, you can even join us in the field when you feel safe to travel. Um, and we have some other uh, purchasing uh, partners. So Amazon Smile, Wanderer Bracelets, and Stream to See are always to uh, do your normal shopping and support DCP. Um, and up there, you can see our website and our email address and all of our social media uh, handles so that you can stay in touch. Um, and with that, um, we had a first and earlier question um, that had to do with the coding um, so not the not when you're say giving a trainer a questionnaire, but when you're coding, are you strictly observing the dolphins, or are you also setting up experiments or manipulating behavior at all? Can you repeat the last part of the question? I started to to lose you at the end. <laughs> Sorry. Um, when you're doing using coding. Um, to assess dolphin personality, are you just watching what the dolphins do on their own, or are you also like making changes in their environment or setting up experiments? Gotcha. So we are not uh, making changes to their environment outside of what's normally happening. So um, typically we are setting up cameras um, and we're recording and we are not adding anything. Um, we're not taking away. Um, sometimes things are added or moved depending on the environment that we're working with. So sometimes for right now with my the project, the rough tooth dolphin, sometimes there are different enrichment devices present. Other times there's not, um, but that's part of their normal scheduled time for different enrichment devices. So we're not really manipulating anything outside of their typical day. Um, and that's true. The goal is usually to try to be as more observant as possible when capturing the data, getting to be lots of different time periods morning, afternoon, evening, if we can, um, in order to get as much well-rounded a picture uh, as we can. Um, but no, we are not trying to add or manipulate anything. Mm -hmm. um, the second part of that question was someone asking if uh, comparing it to other personality studies um, in which they present the subject with a novel stimuli um, and then see how they react. Is that something you might eventually do in your research, or is that not where your research will go? Um, it is something we might eventually do. We are looking to, I think, try something like that out with our um, current project collaboration um, with the Clearwater, um, especially in terms of some uh, EED preference assessments or approaching. Um, so we're still kind of working on that. Um, we usually start with the coding because oftentimes it's the most flexible. We're able to kind of come and record, um, and that gives us data to work with. And but the, there are a couple of studies I know with dolphins. Um, I have a colleague who did I think one where they looked at kind of curiosity when they presented like surprising or not surprising stimuli, and looked at the reactions to it. Um, and those are some ways to help to sometimes target very specific aspects of personality that can be really useful. Um, and I know kind of for today, I focused more on just looking at general personality profiles of animals, um, but especially for some of those harder to assess questions. So that would be questions related to personality where maybe the behaviors that we typically use to help us get an indicator of that personality are maybe not so clear or they're harder to observe. They're more subtle versus a very concrete observable behavior like you moved your peck up down like we can usually see that versus um, sometimes things like approaching or trying to look at ideas behind intent we need to devise specific experiments that help us capture 
those more harder to observe kinds of behaviors. Um, so those definitely play a role in this area of research. I actually had one question. Uh, I think it's pretty cool that you're you're doing a behavior coding study to look at personality, because I think that's the harder way to actually assess a non-human animal personality. We can't we can't go up and and ask them, you know, how do you respond to certain interactions? And as as many in the DCP world know, I have two beagles who have very different personalities, but I get to see them day in and day out, and I'm not allowed to code them. So, but I I can watch their behavior. So you can, and it's much quicker and much easier to do, um, to ask trainers, to ask people who work with the animals day in and day out to do that assessment of an animal's personality or all of the animal's personality. Have you, or do you know of anyone who's done a comparison where they've actually been able to do the behavior coding to suggest personality and then to compare it to what a human perception of the dolphin personality might be and, and how well do they match? If, if that's done. So that's currently not been done in dolphins. Um, I know a, a, a colleague of mine who um, for her, I think it was for her master's thesis as well, did ratings with the same group of dolphins. Um, and so we had been talking about trying to maybe compare what she had found in ratings to what we had found with coding for those that there were overlap with um, in terms of what individuals were present. Um, but we have not done that yet just because due to time scheduling um, it is something I think is really important to do I know that's been done in some of the primate studies with personality where they've tried to do both the coding and the ratings and see where you get the matchup um, and I think that is an important step that needs to happen so it's definitely some that's something we're interested in doing and working towards um, looking at kind of those comparisons in bondless dolphins and maybe hopefully with the rough tooths too um, if we can get, especially if we can get maybe more animals involved. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we have one last question, which I'm going to, I'm going to switch a little bit up. Um, when we think about when a lot of people, a lot of humans tend to want to make animals more like us, more like humans. Um, and so I know often at DCP, we're always trying to look at dolphins as dolphins, not just strictly in comparison to humans. Um, but tying now to the question that I got, um, do you think that it will help humans in general to care about and connect with the dolphins and want to protect them and make better decisions in terms of conservation if we do know more about their personality? I, I for, for myself, I do think that that does help because I think even without sort of realizing it, people see whether it's a, a cool video of dolphins or they see them and they go, oh, look, they're so playful. Um, oh, look, like they're having fun. We kind of already start to ascribe personality characteristics, whether we're really thinking about it in terms of personality. Um, and so I think by being able to hopefully capture more of like what it means for the dolphin to have personality and sort of like that idea of, well, yes, if the dolphin's playful, well, what does playful mean to a dolphin? Um, and trying to help make that connection between personality characteristics that we can research and identify that have more of a, a species focus. Um, that I think does help because we do connect to that idea of having personality so it can help kind of be a bridge to furthering interest and in wanting to help in their conservation. Uh, but I think trying to help make that connection for it being from the dolphin's point of view of what that means. You know, one of the things I'm teaching for my students and they say, oh, well, that animal's being so lazy. I'm like, well, what does that mean? Like being lazy for a human, maybe being lazy for another animal is really a good thing and really advantageous to them. But for us, we don't really consider lazy a beneficial personality characteristic. Um, and so I think that species focus for addressing personality is important and especially for dolphins. Fantastic. Well, with that, um, we're going to wrap up and say our big thank you to Dr. Aaron for doing uh, another program with us. And thank you to everyone who has listened live. 
And thank you to everyone who is listening to this recording. We hope you all have a great day and you continue to uh, learn about dolphins and their ocean home and protect the whole earth. So thanks everybody. Bye.